Dan. Hello. Um, thank you so much for inviting me. It's uh, really a, a big honor to be here in Iceland today. Um, it is my first time in Iceland. Maybe I should try to press this down also. It is my first time here in Iceland, so it is a pretty um, special time. Um, uh, and I have uh, liked everything that I have seen until now, so maybe I should stop seeing stuff. <laughs> And I must also say that I'm very happy that there are a lot of UJ members, of course, who are the members of the uh, UC, the International Union of Socialist Youth. I would say like this, that the level of young members being active is always an indicator on how much in line of its time a party is. It is, of course, uh, concerning both young activists in general, but also young people in uh, power positions, in uh, governments, in uh, parliaments, in municipalities. And this was not me. <laughs> I'm not going to play any music. <laughs> So both within the parties, of course, uh, as activists, but also in different, on different levels in uh, different um, uh, political institutions. Because I believe that, I mean, many, we as young members, we are very active when it comes to elections and so on. But we sometimes take one step back or, or sometimes even being forced to take one step back back after the elections. And this is, uh, this is, I think, a challenge that many of our parties in general, both in Europe but all around the world, have, uh, have to uh, deal with. So it is, uh, and I also must say that I believe that no generation, even if it's a young generation or a generation or elder generation, wants to be that generation who is allowed into the hall, but not into the saloon where the decisions are being taken. So um, we sh if there is any time we need to open up this, uh, this saloon, it is right now. I, another challenge that I must admit that uh, many of our social democratic parties and many of our societies within Europe have is the issue of ethnical, religious, uh, and cultural diversity. Basically, challenge of uh, being a multicultural society, being a multicultural uh, party. This challenge is uh, true for both our parties, and it is also true for institutions in our societies. People are being discriminated because this is what it is about. People are being discriminated based on which color on the hair, or which color on the eyes, or which color on the skin, or which name one have. And uh, um, I, I remember a sentence said by uh, the former Minister of Culture in, uh, during the, the, uh, the uh, Labour government in Norway. She's, uh, she had non-European roots. She said, People are always ask, asking about my roots, but I came here on my feet. It sounds a bit better in Norwegians. Uh, Norwegian, I would try to say it in Swedish because my Norwegian is not good either. It's a, it is, folk frågar mig om mina rötter, men jag går på mina rötter. Folk frågar om mina rötter, men jag går på mina fötter. And this, I think, uh, it, it, pick, it um, colors up the reality in a very good way. It's all about making sure to treat, it, uh, treat each other equally, not based on how we look or which background we have, but based on who we are, our experiences, our dreams, our hopes. This is how we should treat each other, not based on our background and our color. And I must say, a society that doesn't manage to be this diverse, a diverse society that its society is, 
um, these societies to fail to have diversity on different levels of it. It is a failed society, and many of our societies in Europe sadly has, have failed until now. That goes for whether if it is the top jobs in the public sector, or if it, if it is the private sector, or if it is representation in party politics, or in political institutions. So time for change even here. So friends, I think we have uh, many challenges, both national, regional, and of course, global level. There is one special slogan that uh, have um, stuck in that is stuck in my mind since I was uh, since I first time heard it for almost 16 years ago. Because I even if uh, um, I still uh, am young, um, I'm not that young as I was during that time. I was 14 years old when I joined politics. I heard the slogan um, um, saying. All people's freedom, or all peace all around the world require all people's freedom. <laughs> These words describe a very short but perfect way of how we manage to reach the world. We eagerly say that we are struggling for and that we eagerly, eagerly always ask for. Because it's only when all of us, regardless of where on this planet we live, it's only when we are all free, all people are free, that we can, we can be sure that peace will be a reality. And not only reality then, but peace will also be something sustainable. It will not be a short-term peace during a certain time. When everybody are free, then peace will be for sure a reality. <laughs> there are, of course, those who try to say otherwise, who uh, try to say, well, we should take care of ourselves, and they can take care of themselves. And in this way, we will, we will manage. I would say, to blind ourselves with that would not only make us ignorant towards reality, but it will also make us heartless towards those who try to fight all the hinders each day, each day. But the hinders sometimes are a bit too high to manage to uh, climb them. It makes us heartless against all those who live in poverty because society failing to offer them any other option. It makes us heartless towards all those women, men, children, and elderly who instead of having the rain falling down on them, having the bombs raining down on them. No, blindness is for sure not an option, and heartless, uh, heartlessness uh, not either. As social democrats, we know that all our lives are inter interlinked, no matter where on this planet we live. As social democrats, we know very well that our global body works exactly as any other body. Uh, body. When one part of the body is ill, well, the rest of the body is for sure being hurt by it. If not now, tomorrow. So it is only when all people are free, the, pe the peace all around the world is possible. Dear friends, the world is of today, however, is far away, far away from the ultimate one. These last years, it even goes towards the negative side. We see how extremism and we see how oppression tries to take a firm grip of different parts of the world. In the big parts of Europe, we see how racist and fascist parties have a time of their lives. In Middle East, we see Daesh, or uh, more in Europe known as ISIS, try to establish their in, uh, extreme and fascist interpretation of what they ridiculously call Islam. 
In Asia right now, we see op opposition personalities being jailed in Malaysia, for example. Students are being attacked by the Burmese governments. The exclusions and oppression looks different in different parts of the world, but it has its roots in the same reasons. Lack of social justice, lack of equality, and lack of democracy. When deregulation and privatization becomes a fact, and the need of the capital uh, a priority, when a short-term economic interest comes before the struggle for democracy and freedom. Well, it is during those times we can see these kind of developments. And this is exactly what is happening. We have let the neoliberal ideology take, take over, really. And I'm very sad to see that some of our pa parties even in some part of the world have bought the whole neoliberal uh, liberal discourse and the neoliberal answers to the, uh, to the exclusions that many people are, uh, are, uh, are in. The economy should never be the one thing that is in the center. It is the people that should be in the center. We are not here to make it easier for the economy to survive. The economy is here to make our lives easier. The human values should always guide us in everything we do. The high, uh, the high unemployment in Europe, for example, can't be solved through uh, giving the market the freedom to do whatever they want on whatever terms or conditions they want. Or the lack of democracy in Middle East will for sure not be solved by uh, continued trade uh, agreements, armed trade agreements with countries, with fundamental and uh, extreme countries as Saudi Arabia. The solutions are spelled a welfare state that is worth its na name, among other things. Give all people opportunities to fulfill their dreams through access to education, access to uh, decent jobs, access to health care. A welfare state that both creates jobs in the public sector and stimulates the market so that it makes it all possible for the private uh, sector to also uh, be a part of creating these jobs. And the solution is in international cooperation and international trade agreements that leads to more people on this world enjoying social justice, equality, democracy, and freedom. The solution is spelled sol solidarity, regardless of it is here in Iceland, in Sweden, in Europe, in Middle East, or any other part of the world. Because, my friends, the whole, world, the whole world's peace requires all people's freedom. Thank you very much, and um, I wish you a good, uh, good luck with the Congress. Thank you. Thank you.